Something good gonna come out of your mouth now. <laughs> yeah. Except now I forgot about it. <laughs> God damn Alzheimer's. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ho ho ho! Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes Christmas Special with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and myself, Horvath, from Behind the Mistakes. Happy holidays, guys! Woohoo! Hey. Happy holidays! <laughs> All right, that's in the bag. Happy New Year! And Happy New Year! <laughs> happy and, New Year! And happy <laughs> insert celebration here. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, you were talking about Alzheimer's. I'm, uh, I had an uh, experience today, or should I say yesterday? No, it was today. Um, I've had like a pain in my shoulder for the last couple of weeks. Um, and I was thinking it's just a inflammation or something. And uh, of course, uh, I had some tickling and numbing sensation in my fingers and I thought oh it's probably something irritating a nerve or something and all right just nothing to worry about and then the last couple of days I, was, um, I also have this tickling sensation in in my shins and in my toes and right I really don't see the connection between that and the shoulder so I just sent my uh, doctor a message and just described what I'm feeling and like how long should I wait before I start thinking about contacting you again <laughs> and like <laughs> without getting an answer i just got a message on my phone doot, doot. <laughs> you got a uh, doctor's appointment for tomorrow <laughs> so, oh, <no. laughs> so i've been to the doctors today and all right he, he checked out a few things and all right so it's no sign of a stroke or uh, anything heart related which is of course the major concern and yeah then he said the words that you always want to hear and that's uh but you're also too young for that so thank you <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah they have uh, booked me now for an MRI so I'm actually gonna get a photograph of the inside of my head for the first time so that's oh, gonna be cool. nice oh yeah I'm gonna <laughs> post that on my wall or <laughs> something <laughs> the, the I was just hope is... you get this crazy cartoon image of like a inside your head there's a chicken just sat on a nest laying eggs or just something completely random like that <laughs> yeah, I always think of that uh, x-ray scan of uh, Homer Simpson's brain. <laughs> you just see this <laughs> tiny little something. Just <laughs> uh, Yeah, so it's uh, probably nothing, but I would like to check it out. Um, well, it's a free MRI scan of my head, which is... Yeah, that's nice. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the problem with going to the doctors, isn't it, though? There's, there's nothing wrong with you until you go to the doctors. <laughs> Yeah. Then it stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh I haven't eaten enough apples. I mean uh that keeps the doctor away and as long as you're keeping away <laughs> you're you're healthy per definition. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes, the um I only ever go if I can't go to work, then I go to the doctors, but it's not very often. No. Um I've done the same and uh, then of course my my father passed away of some nasty form of cancer and mm, how long did he know? How, how early could he have known? And I, I've always been like, well, what you don't know don't kill you <laughs> until it does. <laughs> and then you, you really don't care. But the perspective yeah. changed a bit after getting kids because you want to stick around for as long as you can uh, see how this pans out. And then, <laughs> all right, maybe I should go to the doctors once too many uh, rather than one too little. So I uh, started having that as a... Not a New Year's resolution, but a all year resolution. I mean, if I uh, <laughs> if I feel something, I can't really understand why it is the way it is. Then, well, it doesn't cost me more than sitting in half an hour, hour in a waiting room, waiting to talk to a guy that can say that. Oh, don't worry about it, and then I can go on in. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, let's not uh, let's not continue along this path for the Christmas no. episode. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is the Christmas episode. That's um, I did actually plan on wearing a, a festive hat and having some jingles and so prepared. But then I woke up after putting the oldest to bed and I realized, oh shit, I got 15 minutes. <laughs> then I haven't <laughs> got anything ready. So here we are, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we actually got a Christmas tree up yesterday. Uh, and we got all the Christmas ornaments and everything on today. Uh, we also bought a new Christmas star with a rotating Santa in an airplane just going round and round. That's bloody great. I thought it was Snoopy in a plane, actually. The lighting wasn't great, so I thought it was Snoopy. Oh, yeah, that would have... Would that have been cool if you had Snoopy sitting on top of his... Uh, like dog house with a flying helmet and everything. I, I think I've seen that as a cartoon. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking, that, okay, what's this going to be next year and the year after and the year after? Because, I mean, you have a year to modify it. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, well, first of all, it's, it's not on battery. It should have been, given the size of it. And Yeah, you can attach basically anything to it. Um, and I got a bit disappointed because when we turned it on, it didn't rotate as fast as I thought it would. Of course, it's uh, it's not malfunctioning or anything. It's just too slow for what I envisioned. But of course, that is <laughs> something we can fix until next year. <laughs> <laughs> More power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I should just make it stationary and then I can rotate the tree because I've seen this uh, rotating uh, Christmas foot uh, <laughs> things and, uh, I, I could make that and I mean you get the rotating Christmas tree stand that rotates at exactly the same speed so the plane is stationary <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so good because yeah, I, I thought cool. about that and uh, I saw you finished uh, your uh, Christmas build as well and then I thought well a Christmas tree foot it's uh that's an item you can play along with. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I'm not making another one, so <laughs> feel free. Go ahead. Everyone's suggesting you make another one. Just modify this one. <laughs> yeah. For next yeah. Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Let's I mean, see that's if... that next Christmas is next year, so that's almost two years away, isn't it? That's how our timing goes, isn't it? For projects. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, we'll see if Simply Bearings want to be a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it in uh, Isn't it in Gothenburg or something? You have a huge uh, SKF uh, bearings manufacturer. I think they have the headquarters yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's a Swedish company, so we should get a sponsorship going. You don't need mm. huge bearings for it, surely. Uh, yes, but the regular sized ones will do. You can't you, you can't have two large bearings. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, what I say. I mean, Check out the bearings on that guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but that being said, uh, of course we got the Christmas tree up, and then we have a fake Christmas tree which we used to have outside. And I also stumbled over the the scrap wood Christmas tree that I built a few years ago, which I kind of forgot about. And I think it was you who mentioned a Christmas fire or something. And yeah, that's a good idea. I can, if I dunk <laughs> it in something flammable, uh, I don't have to decorate it with uh, lights or anything. I could just make it the lights, and then it's going to be a glorious ten minutes before it just <laughs> you should turn into dust. You should maybe soak it for several days in paraffin, so it really yeah. takes a long time. That'd be cool. But I don't have a barrel. Or that much paraffin. That's that's just details. <laughs> yeah. Petrol and <I> in <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Drill a small holes and, and fill it with gas and then plug them so you get little I always wanted to do that. I mean I could I could just strap it on the back of my trailer and go to the local petrol station and just uh, <laughs> pull out the filling <laughs> nozzle and just start spraying it and when people are going by uh, nothing to see here <laughs> just uh just soaking my Christmas tree. <laughs> and then of course lighting it while driving. That would have been cool. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, seeing really Colin cool. versus uh, farting flame pants I mean uh, <laughs> yeah. a burning Christmas tree <laughs> car ornament wouldn't be far off <laughs> yeah I wonder well, how, how how deep you can go in that rabbit hole of building something nice out of wood and then burning it while filming it 
as a festive log fire for the TV. I think that hole is rather deep. Yeah, but but and somewhere in that hole you are you're starting to step on people's toes and then people are getting angry for real if you do burn some stuff. So I mean Yeah, that's true. It might be tricky. I mean that's uh <laughs> But I want to do it all, every time I see the log fire on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did I say? All PR is good. PR and engagement is engagement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so KJ, your Christmas tree's up. Your Christmas tree stands finished. What's yes. missing? What's missing from this equation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on it. <laughs> Six days, TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's a personal best or worst, depending on how you look at it. I think I had a little over 220 video clips uh, to string together. <laughs> uh, and the, the rough edit was 30 minutes, uh, which is way too long. Uh, so I've just started to, to thin it out, or uh, rather to <laughs> tighten it up. So hopefully, hopefully I can get it done this week. I mean, it's not the end of the world if it comes out next week instead, but... But at least uh, this side of New Year, hopefully this side of of Christmas. Yeah, yeah. It's unlikely someone's going to see your video and decide to start building one for themselves before this Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's an inspiration. It's yeah. I, I'm I'm not expecting anyone to be inspired <laughs> and make their own. It's rather than like my uh, hexagonal uh, tiling tip video that people are going oh. Hell no, I'm not doing that. I was considering <laughs> using those tiles. I'm not doing it. So more more of the, in that that way, I think. I have um, taken the direct opposite approach. Uh, I have basically filmed the intro and everything for my Christmas build, but I haven't built it yet. I haven't even started because <laughs> uh, uh, yesterday uh, I went off to a... Uh, like pre-Christmas party in the family and then today we're recording a podcast and so yeah gonna be do a lot of building tomorrow and <laughs> tomorrow you tomorrow you're editing a podcast <laughs> crap <laughs> sorry yeah, to but spoil I, your phone <laughs> nah but this, not, this one is not coming out until uh, the week after that again so I have plenty of time no this one comes out on Saturday no, we did the, we, we agreed on recording now, but it should be out on the thirtieth. Oh, I thought you said this one came out on pulling your leg. Dickhead. And of course, I'll I'll, I'll fit a Christmas build in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> How many hours are there in a Howard day? I mean, it is twenty-eight, mm. thirty, even. <laughs> Not enough, but I mean, if you if you burn your candles uh, every way imaginable, then you can get a lot of things done. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the Christmas build? Oh, it's the um, the hand cranked uh, music box, oh, which I'm gonna course. automate. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Clockwork of course, is the word. It is. It is. Oh, that's that's a decent <laughs> word actually, because I, after I recorded the intro and I was just trying to pick the the clips that uh, I thought was best I just fuck you keep saying play boxes instead of music boxes and then okay <laughs> this is the best clip so far and all right I can live with play boxes and then the last clip is like oh thank god I said music box and then of course I botched another word but all right I'll let it fly <laughs> yeah, but, that's the, the rough rough thing with, when you have the same the same thing filmed from a lot of a uh, lot of angles and how you ch I know I only need one of them which one is the best and you go like oh no this is the best no I one was better than the oh and then you just yeah endless choosing <laughs> and for some reason I keep torturing myself because I want to do the clip in one go of course the previous video when I changed angle on the camera between sentences it's easier to get just one or two sentences without botching it but when you're gonna do like a two minute segment where you're gonna talk continuously you're gonna fuck up something and then of course 
I have a tendency of derailing myself and getting ideas while I'm talking. And then, of course, I don't have the vocabulary <laughs> to, to back it up <laughs> on the fly. So, <laughs> Just make the cuts fun. Yeah. And, Having uh, yourself throwing yourself throwing yourself under the table or yeah and cut down on quality control oh, that's the <laughs> easiest solution so uh, yeah. if we need to i think we need to double back to what you said glenn um about putting a lot of effort into a, a project that you then are gonna burn or dispose of <laughs> i kind of like those projects and I've, I've seen a few of them where people put in a disproportionately amount of hour into making something like close to perfection yeah. only to have it go up in a bang that's <laughs> they know that's the end goal but they're still spending the extra hour buffing and polishing so it looks like spit perfect and then all right i'll go up and <laughs> slap it with a hammer or <laughs> blow it up or something oh, that's a interesting do we take get, do we get to see the uh the gingerbread house this year yeah yeah <laughs> of, course, of course i couldn't just have one christmas project but <laughs> oh, but no this this is this is really going to be a low-key build i have the the new mold and everything so it's just i need a, an hour to just make the ingredients and pour it into the mold and then of course it's an evening just uh decorating the house and of course uh, lighting it up takes 10 seconds so uh yeah i think i'll do that but it will be probably before new year's eve i'm thinking yeah, yeah. fair <laughs> enough this shouldn't have been an episode it should have been an intervention <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, the the biggest issue and that's the same issue as i had last year it's it's pissing down outside there is nothing resembling like white christmas anymore and yeah. Of course, of, of safety reasons, I do want uh, to build this thing outside, uh, at least uh, the melting and the pouring part. And doing that in the rain, that's that's not fun. <laughs> and I have some old footage of one we made where it also was pissing down on New Year's Eve. And after you build it, for, again, safety reasons, you just don't want it standing around inside your house uh, <laughs> like a ticking time bomb. So... Uh, we just had to go out and light it up, but it was raining and we we were soaking and everything was soaking and the video came out rubbish. Of course, it was a old mobile phone as well, 750p or something like that, and really <laughs> grainy and but yeah, it's the process, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how's everybody else's um, Christmas preparations coming on? Are you getting there? All the shopping done, all the parties done, pre-parties that is. Yeah, all the parts are done, and uh, I, I actually snuck away on uh, on uh, lunchtime uh, today and bought like six Christmas presents or something like that. <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> the, I had a, I mean, I had a a list and just hit the store ten 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 <laughs> and got home just in time for my next meeting. So that was. Nice. That felt like a well-spent hour. <laughs> Did you go out with a plan in your head, knowing what you were going to buy already? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's when you do when you sit in a, in a boring meetings uh, all day. You just plan what you <laughs> what you're going to do when you get out of the meetings. That's all I do when I'm at work as well, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and my wife went into Lincoln, the city, um, on Saturday and got quite a bit of shopping done, actually, Christmas shopping. And then in the evening we headed off to her works party, which was nice, nice meal. Yeah, yeah good, we need to evening. talk about that. Um, you went to a, a Christmas work party and you bring your spouses? I mean, Not, in Norway that's a, that's a no-go. All the Christmas parties are without spouses. Well, you've, you've, you've talked about sexual harassment and things like that, so I understand <laughs> why. <laughs> it's because uh, you, know, you, you take your spouses, you can't do the sexual harassment thing, can you? So, well, I uh, maybe that's well, what spouses we do. can meet spouses. So, <laughs> yeah, and I that's mean, just uh, a, that's not a Christmas party anymore, KJ. That's a swingers <laughs> club. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> 
that explains a lot. <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be fun to to actually meet all the people that you hear stories about you know, all day long when you're in the office. I mean, everyone tells you have you have this picture of of people's spouses and kids and that sort of thing, yeah. and to actually see them in in real life could be interesting. Might <laughs> not live up to the hype. No, <laughs> it's not Our, a normal uh... thing for every Christmas party for spouses to come along to. I mean, places I've worked in the past, it was just employees only. Okay. But, um, yeah, it, it does happen, and this one's quite a family-focused business. You know, they've, they have um, fathers and sons working for the same company <laughs> in this one. So it's, it's quite nice and family-focused. So, yeah, that's probably why they do it there. And, yeah. of course, I, I am her boss's gardener as well, so kind of work for them <laughs> yeah no I I like bringing my wife to parties also as we discussed earlier she's the social ones but it takes the pressure off I mean I don't have to put in an effort and I I still know I'm gonna get laid by the end of the evening so it's a win-win <laughs> it does take the pressure off <laughs> how long have you been married are you, are you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we are running up on, uh, yeah, seven years soon. Yeah. Yeah. Eight and, and a you, half. And you still know you're going to be late. That's pretty good going. <laughs> well, sometime in the future, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, did I? Oh, did I say that same night? Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of implied, but at the same time, yeah. there's no energy left. Surely, at this time in your in your life, after a party, get home late, oh, straight to bed <laughs> for sleep. <laughs> yeah, knowing that you have a responsible for two toddlers again in the morning. Yeah, that's... yeah. Well, that depends on where the kids are. If if the babysitter is taking care of them tomorrow morning as well. And that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. But then again, I thought, I think the, the priority of getting sleep would be much more higher <laughs> on that priority list, at least at this stage. Yeah. <laughs> Cupid is smacked in the head by the Sandman once again. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's getting really close to Christmas. So any, all right, you've done the Christmas shopping. Um done all the partying i mean pre-christmas partying but so what's your plan for christmas eve do you have a like a template that you uh, do you have a routine that you go through every year or is it low-key uh, of course your your christmas eve is your christmas day isn't it our christmas day yeah so christmas eve is basically last minute cleaning for us <laughs> <laughs> put your feet up and get ready for the big day on christmas day yeah it's, yeah, we do. it's the same here as well. Um, of course, it's from you, what we call Christmas Eve on the 24th. Um, of course, you get up and you start preparing lunch. And of course, you're tag teaming with your spouse uh, who, who are occupying the, the kids while the other is uh, doing last minute preparations before the guests arrive. And then, of course, after lunch, you are directly into cleaning and preparing for dinner. And then... Of course, by the time of the gift uh, opening session after dinner and everything, you are really exhausted. So, so we have done a hybrid now the uh, last year or so, and then planning for, to do that this year as well. That we're just going to open a few packages on the evening, and then of course give the kids uh, ample time to just play with those and just not stress in opening packages and everything while <laughs> everybody's waiting their turn and so on. So, and then we are doing a combination that we also have the rest of the gifts uh, on the morning after because the the first day of christmas we are generally not allowed to go to visit every, anyone you should stay at home or you can of course go outside if the weather allows it so that's usually a boring day for the kids so then if they have some presents that they can open from the morning and use that to <laughs> make the day enjoyable uh, that has worked for us i just realized that yeah, we're probably a bit weird in Sweden because here for the last 
50 years or something like that. The main thing is uh, the Walt Disney uh, special from 50 years ago that starts <laughs> 3 o'clock or 3.05, I think, in the afternoon. And that's like at least half the population is sitting down in front of the telly watching that. <laughs> uh, I think that's about the same time we used to get the Queen's speech. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we... <laughs> and that, sure. and that's... same routine, different wrapping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, it's it's a bit weird when you think about it that Sweden, at least uh, like fifty years ago, were seen as kind of a socialist country. I mean, we are social democrats, most like most of us, mostly uh, compared to other countries, a bit on the left at least. But to have like the pinnacle of 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 uh i mean uh america more or less like disney for one hour just showing short videos and giving <laughs> them for f more or less for free uh an advertising window where they can show clips from the latest disney uh, movie that comes out this year <laughs> and have, have that on prime time on christmas eve that is a bit weird, and that, and that this has been a tradition that, and um, that you really, you really can't get away from. So wow. ev everything in Chris uh, regarding Christmas is more or less built around this. Because I mean, <laughs> for us, it's... the the re my uh, the parents-in-law and the other uh, the rest of the family comes just after lunch, and we have a yeah. little get together, and then. It's this for an hour between three and four, and then we pre prepare uh, dinner, and then we eat din Christmas dinner, and then we exchange gifts, and then more or less the evening is over. And that's Christmas. <laughs> you wait, we you have... make the kids wait until after dinner, not first thing in the morning. No, I mean, it's Christmas Eve, it's the Eve, oh, that's okay. the Christmas. Uh, fair yeah. enough. It's you that weird. That's to wait the morning after. Yeah, that's torture. I, I guess there's a paragraph in the Geneva Convention against that. <laughs> Should be at least. But we have this something similar in in Norway. I mean, the Disney uh, cavalcade uh, is uh, a lot earlier in the morning. But that's something you you just get up in the morning in your PJs and everybody just gathers around and watches that. But we also have the three wishes for uh what's it called uh cinderella uh and it's the old uh czechoslovakian uh, version from 1973 i think it was where you have one voice actor doing all the voices it's really absurd but <laughs> it's become a tradition and you have to see it and I, th I think a couple of years ago they made a new norwegian version of the film but of course people are still watching the old one because it has become a tradition and of course there's a lot of parodies and everything but that is something i think more than two-thirds of all norwegians are just glued to the television set at that point when that is airing and then <laughs> that i think that is the last film of the day before you can like okay now you can start christmas eve <laughs> <laughs> I think the only expected uh, film that we have is one of the Bonds. We definitely, there's always got to be a James Bond on at some some point at Christmas. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a festive. decent tradition. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's about as festive as Die Hard, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> let's not open that uh. can of worms. <laughs> well, let's do. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a Christmas movie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what does a typical Christmas dinner look like for you guys? I mean, we're turkey, roast potatoes. Yeah, well, it's uh, that's the easy thing with Sweden, that it's more or less the same every occasion. Okay. Uh, there's always a buffet. I mean, it's a reason that smörgåsbord, it's a Swedish word. That's uh, right. English has thing over, because we, we do that all the time. Uh, uh, what's sill called in English? Herring cabbage? I don't know. <laughs> Just putting together two words. <laughs> the, the fish, herring, and cabbage. Yeah. Is it like oh, a, stuffed, is it a no. stuffed cabbage? It sounds delightful. 
I have no idea. I th- uh, it looks like he's Googling Pickled it. herring. Pickled oh, herring. Oh, okay. That's I've actually, in I've actually abundance. Heard that. uh, Say again, so KJ. Pickled herring in abundance. I mean, at least two, three kinds. Probably more. Right. Uh, for everyone who likes fish. And there's salmon. Uh, and there's uh, sausages of different kinds. And uh, yeah, most every part of the pig. Uh, at least for for Christmas, it's a little more pig oriented. Uh, meatballs, of course, and uh, okay. different kind of cabbage uh, things as well. And and I mean, if you really any other any other holiday in the year like Easter, it's the same thing, but we are a little more eggs, a little more chicken, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I mean, uh, uh, at midsummer, it's more or less the same food, but we also uh, have a cream cake with strawberries on. So you right. just add one thing. Uh, and the, the big thing is the, the Christmas ham, of course. Is the, so ham is the big, uh, okay. big thing on Christmas. Uh, but everything okay. else is more or less moved, ra- moved around than used at every, <laughs> every holiday. So, so ham is a bit of a tradition in here as well. It's not a necessity, but it is, uh, you know, for Christmas tea. Um, there's normally a, a, a Christmas ham as well. Yeah. What about Norway? It's, Does that roll the same way? Yeah, we have a lot of the same as the Swedes. And of course, for like the main dish on Christmas Eve, it's it varies from families. But of course, it's um, ham being one of them. In my family, uh, it has been lamb ribs. Uh, of course, uh, salted meat uh, for a long time, which you need to water out and... I feel all the Norwegian dishes are, as in many of the Nordic countries, they are traditional dishes that popped up because we didn't have any of the modern ways of conservating meat back then. So, of course, uh, um, this Norwegian dish, uh, rakfisk, uh, which is a trout, which is salted and then uh, autolyzed in something for two to three months uh, before you then uh, can eat it. Um, it's a bit like the Swedish surströmning. I mean, it it doesn't really smell or taste very well. You have to have a lot of fatty condiments uh, on the plate to just cover the <laughs> taste and a lot of alcohol. And that goes for a lot of the dishes. And w- <laughs> that yeah. seems to be a trend in Norway, Sweden, Iceland, where you have the the most rancid smelling tasting food for <laughs> your biggest events through the year. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense today, but once it's become a tradition, we don't deviate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some yeah, sort of the food fisk challenge. Is a, is a big thing as well. Yeah. I, I, I bought a box. Uh, we went on a trip with some Danish friends, and uh, he's married to a, a Swede. So, all right, we started talking. At one point, we should uh, try Suistrømning. So, we actually chipped in and we bought a box, and then <laughs> we chickened out. So, I ended up bringing it back home, and it sat uh, on a shelf for a couple of years, and then. Uh, well, now th- this is not going to happen, so I just <laughs> threw it away. But uh, <laughs> we are still talking about it, like uh, it's going to happen in the future. But uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Don't do it. Do it. <laughs> Film it. <laughs> yeah, content. Yeah. <laughs> get, uh, th- there's a lot of videos out there of people trying Suzerning for the first time, and I, I don't think I can make a better video than those. <laughs> oh, you can't. <laughs> or film worse. The kid- Film the kids eating it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the Geneva Convention then <laughs> again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, there's a <laughs> film <laughs> feeding Glamet. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably like it. <laughs> yeah. But you're not allowed to bring it on an airplane. Uh, but you, I, I guess you can buy it in uh, in UK. I guess so. Maybe we should try and arrange for that for Maker Central next year. So you heard it here first. <laughs> Glenn is going to down a, a box of Susterumning <laughs> at Maker Central. All right, then. If, if I'm going to do that, we could, we need to come up with some other challenges for you, pair. Then <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's going to be our first live event. Trying yeah. uh, di- different dishes from uh, all the contestants of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something for next year's Carpet Festival, and perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making a mess. <laughs> well, being honest, I, I don't think that was a very bad idea. Of course, uh, there is a 
degrees of uh, rancidness <laughs> you, yeah. you can choose from but uh, yeah and yeah, because your wife Glenn she asked but you for can't some say uh, rancid this and then bring up my wife <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a rude actually <laughs> yeah I uh, thought you were developing a nice relationship with her oh yeah oh, she's going to be Blue. so upset with you oh uh, <laughs> Yeah, and she's gonna be even madder when she realizes, oh, it was going to segue into my baking. <laughs> I, I was gonna try to segue on her asking for some recipes for some Swedish and Norwegian traditional baking recipes, and then I was yeah. going to double back on, uh, do you have any specialty uh baked goods for Christmas in, in Norway we have like the the seven traditional kinds that everybody should bake every year and of course six out of those seven are dry as uh, <laughs> you could use this as drywall I mean it's uh, okay uh, yeah then again it's, it's the tradition it doesn't matter how it tastes as long as it's tradition but uh, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that you had something better to bring to the table well I think we have three desserts which are expected at Christmas the first being Christmas cake which is a very fruity cake where the fruit's been soaked in brandy normally mm. iced on top that's nice mm. also pairs well with cheese randomly um, and mm. then there's the Yuletide log which is like a Swiss roll covered in chocolate <laughs> that's nice it's nice and sweet and not dry and then my favorite is trifle do you guys come across trifle yeah nope, I've never heard of it i think i've heard of it and i think i've tried it uh, many years back yeah so it's literally uh, a jelly with fruit and sponge for the bottom layer and then a layer of custard do you know what custard is yeah yeah okay and then a layer of cream on top of that and either sprinkles or chocolate <laughs> yeah that's my favorite and we have those ingredients for our christmas meal definitely <laughs> <laughs> how about you <Yeah>. kj <laughs> <laughs> i was just envisioning it uh, it's a little bit much but yeah that i mean that's basically what christmas is about being a bit much yeah, yeah. It's pretty much what being a Glen's all about, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it, it was it was nice this week because um, everybody got the same memo. None of us put a video out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were finally in sync. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Havard looks sad. Have you yeah, got, have you got well, withdrawal I'm, symptoms? Yeah, I, I broke a good streak, so uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, no, I don't want to go there. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I brought down the mood. <laughs> yeah, well, you need yeah. to have uh, you need to have a sabbatical every now and then, and of course, yeah. it's, uh, over the Christmas, I think everything is going to slow down a bit, which is going to be good. Yeah, Did it's you... just a matter of starting it up again after. When you, yeah. when you started slowing down, you have to speed up again. And that got me thinking, of course. Now you have... That's maybe the worst thing from now and until the start of January. It's all the reruns and like the compilations. I, I think I ranted on about this earlier as well. But I mean, I don't need everyone that I'm following or television channels or, or whatever summing up all oh, this happened the last year I mean I know I lived through the last year and it's the closest one to me it's the one I remember most of so please Do you want so, to, 10 years ago this happened yeah that would be a lot more interesting so for, for me except the, the few traditional TV shows and so on it's like uh, it's a very nice time to just switch everything off uh, and that's going to be my goal this year I just realized I'm spending too much time on a screen so I'm going to cut that down in Christmas that's going to be nice because now of course Europeans have been given access to threads so now there's another 
area which you have uh, <laughs> content possibilities uh, or grievances or whatever you want to call it. So, so uh, how many uh, posts have you made and how many replies have you got in the void? <laughs> I've, I've posted the obligatory first one and I think I had What's two, all re- this about, then? two replies. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm kind of thinking that's going to be the only one. I just yeah. pressed accept just to establish... I think still if we uh, we weren't able to download the app in Norway, but I think that Instagram has still reserved your name. So I don't think an- anyone else could have picked uh, my name, but it's like, okay, I can just press it so then I have it. But I'm not planning on being very active there. No. It seems like all the, the commercials for it, when there's uh, examples of people's messages, it's just... Well, what is this? This is crap. I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not really the best kind of promotion, I would say. It's something no. you, you sign up for. I didn't realize what it was. I just thought, oh, there's a new app, Thread. Let's go on it. And then, you know, I've accumulated some followers and I just keep getting notifications come through on my Instagram, which annoy me. So I have to go back into Threads to see what they are to get rid of them. And I, <laughs> yeah, keep, and trying is... to turn, I, I keep trying to turn them off, but the longest you can mute them for is eight hours. Yeah, and that okay. I, what I didn't realize after I downloaded the app, um, of course now, <laughs> between all the advertisements uh, in the Instagram feed, you also now have uh, threads post showing up. Yeah. But you, you can just read the first half, and when you click on it, uh, okay, I want to read this text. It then jumps you over to the other app. I mean, it's Instagram owning both apps, yeah. so. I mean, they could allow you to read the full content in the other app between switching because when I realize it's switching to another app and I have to physically switch back again. And then, of course, Instagram has it does that auto refresh when you go back into it. So then you have lost yeah. whatever thread you yeah. were on. Uh, so that I just so pissed that. me off. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not clicking on any thread in Instagram because that just ruins uh, already bad experience. <laughs> Instagram yeah, so. should really have a like a pause button or something. If I want to show someone, oh, look at this post. And I, I mean, I have to keep my phone alive while it's on and not <laughs> if I actually turn it off. It's, oh, it's refreshed. Oh, now where is it gone? <laughs> what, yeah. what, uh, where was it from? I have to screenshot things if I want to show them to someone. <laughs> I wished so, um, Instagram and YouTube worked together in the same way that Instagram and Threads work together. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be so much easier. <laughs> and what is what is really irritating is that I, d- I don't have the same amount of followers on TikTok, but of course when I make shorts, it's very easy to just, ah, I just upload them there as well. And I get a lot higher views there on any post compared right. to Instagram or YouTube <laughs> shorts or whatever. Yeah. And that's like, and I really despise that app as well. But of course, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> seem to want to watch my videos there uh, compared to Instagram, Facebook or all the others. So it's uh, it's it's almost like that app was made for the short video format and not for <laughs> family posts or pictures or long form videos. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, but that's it. It's kind of okay when you had that as a starting point, but I I don't see myself as being in that demographic at all. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, so it's weird, but still, I keep, when I made content that fit into that format, I just dump it there and forget about it. Yeah. (laughs) I took all my, yeah, I started on TikTok and um, took all my videos off there. It just, I just didn't like it. I don't know why. It just made me feel dirty. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean sometimes yeah. you get that feeling yeah <laughs> like you in shorts kj isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it's, uh, it's just something it rub, rubs me the wrong way i i can't really explain it it's weird it's probably me i i think i could actually the interactions i have with people on youtube is also more related to the content and and people are giving you feedback that you can play off of uh, in some other weird way. So I think I would be perfectly happy 
just dropping any other platform than YouTube and just focusing on that. Of course, the, the I think we discussed it earlier that the, the thing I now use Instagram for, it's uh, just keeping in touch with people. <laughs> so yeah. it's basically a glorified uh, <laughs> WhatsApp or something like that, where you get an endless yeah. stream of adverts and one and two interesting posts in between. If only yeah. YouTube had something like that, we can actually communicate with people easily. Yeah, they, they have a bit uh, left on the user interface friendliness uh, with that respect. I mean, they have they have all the aspects now. They have the long form videos and you have the shorts and then you have the community tabs and you can communicate with people. But there's there's no good integration on any of those. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and of course, you could separate between... Um, yeah, if you have your friends or everyday people that you follow that you can actually split what you share to whom uh, yeah so they, they they have a bit <laughs> left but then again do you want them to uh, try to get closer to other apps or should they just keep doing yeah. their own thing doesn't google own some kind of social media app like the other ones or are you just trying to make their own and failing again and again and again don't know. Who owns no. Snapchat? The one that the kids use. Beats me. Huh. That one's weird. <laughs> yeah. That one's weird. That's got a tracking option on it. Yeah, the one that the kids use and my mom. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's a weird <laughs> demographic there. You have the kids, and then you have the 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 grandparent generation using it for some weird yeah. reason. When my uh, son was at school, all the girlfriends used to track the boyfriends on Snapchat. <laughs> and what are you I'm... doing at her house? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can turn it off. You but... can, yeah. Yeah. But, but I really like can, that. It, Sorry. It can be useful. Uh, it was uh, sometime, I think, earlier this year, there was uh, some kids uh, in a car crash, and all their friends found out because they saw that, oh, these five people's location they're in the same place and they're in the middle of nowhere. They shouldn't be there. Something has happened. Oh, wow. So they yeah. can actually alert. The, <laughs> yeah. Because they were in a car crash and they were more or less in, in the wreck and couldn't get out. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good use for, for tracking people. Yeah, we, we have used that feature on uh, like holidays and so on with friends uh, through Google where you just turn on tracking and of course let's meet up and then you can just bring up the map and you see all the blue dots and you just start wa walking on <laughs> until you collide with them. So it's a, I mean, if you are a, a party of several going uh, to see different things and you agree to meet up for lunch at some place, then it's uh, nice to see where people are. Oh, that's terrible. You yeah. can't do I that. I think WhatsApp has that as well. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, I'm going to try can't... that on Glenn tomorrow. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that whole thing. Oh no, I'm really sorry. We're held up in traffic. We can't make it this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to you give have your phone. We, phone we can that. see where you are, mate. <laughs> yeah. You hand your phone to a random stranger. Can you just uh, take this and stand here for 10 minutes while I yeah. go? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a spy move. You have a burner phone that you put in someone's pocket and you see them oh, wander yeah. off. <laughs> You can track me tomorrow if you like, Havard. I'm going 10 minutes in one direction for the morning and then I'm travelling past my house and going 10 minutes in the other direction for the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's the one thing. I don't have the use for it at all. But the, the last time we were visiting the States, is like we went into a shop and I was like, ooh, burner phones. <laughs> I just really wanted to buy one. Like, <laughs> probably find some use for it, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> he could have tried to call the president or, I don't know, whoever. Yeah. And other American YouTubers or. I'm, not sure, what mischief, I'm yeah. not sure what mischief you could have caused though so then what's the point <laughs> yeah it's uh they are hard to reach uh, i don't think it would be easier using a burner phone but no uh, on the topic of reaching out to youtubers um i actually uh, stumbled over uh, uh wintergatan's last video and uh, martin the uh, the guy made making the marble machine 
he had a, like a deep thought realization uh, and i thought oh i want to use this clip so i just sent uh, uh his management address uh, uh an email and just asking if i could use this clip in my next video and uh, i actually got a reply from martin Yay! himself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Go ahead, use it. Um, uh, I don't think there will be any copyright claims from uh, YouTube, but uh, if that happens, we'll figure out. <laughs> so it's nice. Oh, so I gotta go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. That's a win. Yeah, that's a I'd, win. Yeah, I had I had a win this week as well. I won a challenge. All right. Tell us more. Yeah. Well, a couple of weeks ago, if you remember on the episode, I was talking about my daughter's volcano school project. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So you. Uh... Yeah. No, it's the only. It's the only important challenge this week, yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, she came first. So yay! Won the volcano <laughs> challenge. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, you, the... <laughs> you brought it from almost nothing to a really good stage. How much did the next person, the next person? add on to that the other two kids apparently just stuck labels on it <laughs> so 90 percent of the work was you and your daughter yep yep and 70 percent was me <laughs> that's that's the thing i was going to ask about because i'm i'm so hoping that the school my daughters end up in have some like kind of science project or something because we are going all <laughs> yeah. in on that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and if they're not interested, I'm going all in. <laughs> I just need their names on the <laughs> registration <laughs> form. We actually had a parents' evening um, again a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know, we it was the first time we'd actually been able to go into the school for parents' evening since COVID. So it was nice to go and chat in real real life with the teachers. But yeah. the last meeting we had was the DT teacher, the design and technology teacher. And that was fantastic. We barely spoke about anything that my daughter's done. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about CO2 lasers and uh, 3D printing. But one thing that I found out, which I didn't know existed, is that he's got a filament for the school 3D printer, which actually has wood in it. And so yeah. when you've printed okay. your project, you can sand... The project and you can actually stand um, stain it with the wood stain and finish it like a piece of wood huh. i've heard about I that, that but i have fascinating yeah yeah he, they have a, an options evening in january and he promised to show me it working <laughs> <laughs> so i'll let them wander around the languages and the sciences and things and i'll just go to the dt <laughs> the dt <laughs> workshop <laughs> yeah yeah, actually, uh, this week I've uh, I've made a decision. I'm I'm getting a 3D printer, and I'm just skipping the part where you are uh, looking into what is what and uh, trying to decide and then stretching as far as you can to get a yeah. big one or or anything. I'm so I'm getting a dirt cheap one just to start doing it because I'm gonna. I'm not going to spend all the time reading up and watching videos and so on. I, I have yeah. to make my own preferences. So I'm buying a cheap one just to start making stuff. And then, of course, I'm going to realize what I want to use it for or yeah. not. If it ends up just staying on the shelf, I haven't uh, spent too much money on it. Which it, one could again? Be, it could be um, nice to spare parts as well to make something yeah. else out of yeah it's either the one we talked about last time the any cubic but it's still a bit pricey and i think the the creality one uh they have a new one i think it's called one <laughs> or something like that, <laughs> that makes uh, it easy, and, it? In, in different sizes and i'm thinking i'm going for the smallest of those i think it's a uh, two three hundred dollars or something so it's a uh, neat yeah fantastic so do when you have you, space when... for it <laughs> sorry <laughs> Do you have space for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that I can have here in my... Uh, you will probably see it moving around under the pastry sign. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when are you pushing the button on that purchase? Is it before Christmas or after Christmas? Or in oh. between? Oh, Do, it now. Now. Do it online. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do it live? Yeah. Yeah, do it live. 
I'm kind of hoping that it's going to be like a January sale or something. Uh, so that's uh, so I'm waiting until over Christmas because it it won't be delivered in time for Christmas. And if I got it before Christmas, I would use any opportunity to just uh, ditch everyone to go down into my office and play with myself. Or <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I think it's nice to wait for after Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting that for for yourself for Christmas. Are you getting yourself a Christmas present, Glenn? No, not at the moment. No, I think I'm still under a little bit of a spending ban. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to consider one of your purchases as being your Christmas pre- Christmas Christmas present this year? Mm, yeah, we're, I don't I don't think we're buying each other presents, but. Um, first opportunity i get i'm uh, i want to i've got a few finishing touches i want for the office like a new carpet a bookshelf and a 3d printer <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah it's good at the 3d printer thing i think it's definitely going to happen next year for me yeah, yeah. now i'm starting about- to see actually using it for parts in other projects of course um, if I'm going to wait around or buy something that have like a finish that you can get like decorative pieces out without doing too much after work on them, that uh, that wouldn't happen. But uh, making small parts for other projects, I think they're going to be great. Yeah. What about you, KJ? Christmas well, present I, wise? I, I think I'm con- I, I'm considering the 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 router the palm router i bought earlier that will be the the christmas present for this year i think yeah because it's fair enough yeah you showed a slight interest in wanting a laser do you think that'll happen next year no i don't think so i don't have i feel i have to i have to make some headway on the on the make a to-do list and actually find a decent laser project, then I can start thinking about getting one. Right. Yeah. Because I, I have I have too many things that I've I've gotten and not used yet. And that feels like such a waste having things just lying <laughs> on the shelves waiting to be used. Yeah. When yeah. I could can when I could I mean use something for free more or less because I've already paid for it. That feels better. I think so it's... no, I'm not getting a laser anytime soon, and I'm not getting a 3D printer either. But I will be start start use, utilizing my father-in-law, who we gave a 3D <laughs> printer the, like one and a half years ago or something uh, like that. Okay. And he said, that, "Well, if you need something printed, just let me know." And I still haven't done that, so I think I'm gonna actually. <laughs> I have some plans, and it's just I just have to break that initial seal, so to say, and I should ask him to print stuff. And then it's, I mean, the floodgates might open and we don't see the end of it, but who knows? <laughs> Fantastic. Outsourcing. That's the future. <laughs> yeah. We actually had a leaflet through our door last week um, a chap offering 3D printing services. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Shell gave me the leaflet and said, You might want this in the future. I'm, and I threw it straight away thinking, if this guy's going to print for me, I'm never going to get one of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did <laughs> like the print on demand. It, it's tantalizing, and there is a company. It's a two-hour drive from me, so it's, it's not that close by. But they actually do metal 3D printing for the industry, and they had like a presentation stand at one of the conferences I was at. And of course, we're working for a large uh, engineering company. They they were really interested in having a chat with me and when they realized oh you're into this then we we <laughs> had a chat until uh, the bell rang and we had to do everybody go for the next session but i could really see myself using their machine park <laughs> but then again <laughs> uh, if i were to pay for it i don't think i could afford it but uh, it's amazing to see what they can do with uh, multi-million dollar uh, 3d printing <laughs> capabilities <laughs> <laughs> So um, you talked about tools. You talked about presents. What's the um, upcoming projects for next year? Anything on the cards for anybody? <laughs> ah. 
Well, I have a few projects in mind. Um, one of them is kind of dumb, uh, which makes one it of them. Re- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, even even to my standard, this is dumb. <laughs> I want to uh, I want to make a concrete table with uh, heating cables in it. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah. For what purpose? <clears throat> well, I I I actually built a few um, concrete tables before, so I, I have the process kind of nailed, and I like to draw by hand, uh, and and the room doesn't necessarily have to be warm. But I hate to freeze on my fingers, and of course, uh, sitting at my last table, of course, the the room being cold, the table is cold, and if you're sitting at a concrete table, uh, that retains that. uh, It takes a bit of time before that heats up. Uh, So what I ended up doing, I went down into the office, and then I put a heater on under the table to just keep me hot. And at some point I realized now I'm too hot, so I turn it off. But then the residual heat in the concrete table, yeah. it really kept on just radiating heat for a long time. So I started... A nice big thermal mass. Yeah, so maybe I should hmm. just put some heating cables in my next tabletop and just pour the concrete. And then I could just have like plug it in and then... I really want to do that as a project. It's, it's cheap and it can be done quick and of course... I have a table project coming up and a proper oak table uh, for my office. So this is going to be, I know this table is going to be just to see if it works and then it's going to be replaced fairly quickly. So it it feels a bit wasteful, but it's uh, the cost and materials are going to be next to nothing. So uh, table um, radiator. Would the table not just crack? Concrete, not just crack with the heat cables inside it. Yeah, but <clears throat> that depends on how you. thick it is. And you oh, have okay. uh, like um, what's it called? Uh, fiberglass, the uh, reinforced uh, yeah, yeah. concrete. Uh, yeah. That one should uh, be more than good enough. I mean, it's not. Okay. I, I think the I found the five meter heating cable putting out 400 watts or something. And if you distribute right. that over that surface, it shouldn't be uh, a problem, I think. Yeah. And then again, if it cracks, it cracks. I've spent probably 50, 60 pounds on it at the top. Yeah. yeah. So. As long as it's thick enough and it's supported, it shouldn't be a problem, I think. Yeah. Fair enough. But I don't know. What about you, KJ? What's your upcoming projects? Uh, well, it's a lot. Uh, it's a long list. I would, I should say, uh, uh, a lot of things, fixing things uh, or improving uh, things in uh, in the home, so to say. Some, and I have another um, gas canister uh, video uh, planned. I mean, I filmed like half of it. While while doing the other the the chain balls, so it's it's half half done, and yeah, I, I think. But I but I I saw uh, not that far down on the list is the uh, the knife along we were talking about earlier. Oh, when's that gonna start? We should we well, should set a date. We, we said after after the new year, I, I, as I remember it. So yeah, I say we should do something like that. Yeah. yeah, so beginning well, of January, have... can we start? I'm up for it, I think. But yeah. what we should this is talk something about... I wanted to just build ages ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and of course it's easy for me to say we just nailed the design today, so I know yeah. what to do and how to do it. But we did talk about should we involve others. I think that there's been a lot of challenges. I don't think a challenge thing, but I, I like the along part of knife along. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyone who wants to tag along, we can s- make it over a span of several weeks and it can be a topic for the podcast. People can maybe comment and submit questions so we can have that as a reoccurring theme for a couple of yeah. episodes. I think that would be very cool. And then, of so course, the... Uh, decide on, on what to do and when to do it. <laughs> and then the problem is, should we do like the, like the Christmas... Uh, 
yeah, the secret Santa maker thing uh, that we post videos at the same time. And then, of course, we can have the listeners rate uh, the, the projects. That just turned it into a competition, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, the, the rating I'm up, part. I'm up for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> because yeah. we like the stats. But having <laughs> the, the, a simultaneous video and as well I- inviting others to, to join in. Yeah, yeah, but um, I hear what you now said, and I I think as well it's uh, I don't think we should add a, a competitive element to it. Basically, it's just uh, our take should be just a uh, a friendly. Everyone can tag along for the journey, and then yeah. uh, we have fun as we go along. There's not a competition, yeah. and there's not an end goal. There needs to be an end time, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Third year in a row, still. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I made a I made a knife handle, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> and I had to I redo a kitchen. And, yeah. <laughs> then we moved and got a new house. Don't remember where I put the the handle, so but I stumbled over a blade or something that could be a blade. <laughs> yeah, so I, I see myself uh, letting this drag out if I don't have a deadline. <laughs> For the fifth well, episode in a row. Well, I've made a new handle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, January is a long, boring month, isn't it? Should we start at the beginning of January and finish at the end? Well, it could be... The start-off point could be the next episode after having a guest, or should we spring it on our guest? Unless he's listening to this episode, and then there will, won't be much uh, <laughs> surprise. <in. laughs> We've got a guest? <laughs> I heard some rumors. We do. Yeah. We actually we, have, we, we are actually planning these things kind of and have things lined up and that sort of thing, even if it doesn't sound like we know what we're doing. Yeah. Are we sharing who's coming on, KJ? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we don't plan it uh, too much because uh, <laughs> me actually segueing into this was not intentionally or planned in any way. <laughs> So we kind of took ourselves on surprise there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, we have invited, and he has accepted, uh, James from Fix It Fingers uh, to come on the the first episode of the new year. Uh, and if you don't like uh, that information to be out, Hova, then you can just cut that bit. Yep, I have uh, full <laughs> editorial powers this week. So, uh, yep, I'm I'm actually working on a little uh, reel. Hopefully for the weekend, I've actually finished the project. That's going to just be a, a thirty second short or video, or reel. Sorry, and um, I was going to reveal the fix it fingers thing anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it li- it lines up like it's planned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So with that, uh, I think it's a. Uh, isn't that a nice news to wrap the episode up on? Yeah, we yeah. have got. There is a, a turg words, but you can either keep it in this episode or for the uh, <laughs> part. So it's entirely. I'm, up to I'm you not guys. sure which one it is, but I saw someone <laughs> there, and I, I just thought to myself, they didn't tag anyone, but this felt overly not uh, like a coincidence <laughs> i think it re- should it should uh, i think it fits in the half pint better than the main episode no. <laughs> not knowing anything <laughs> carry on then <Nenevard. laughs> all right well that's it then thank you for listening and with that cliffhanger we uh, welcome you to the next half pint And in the meantime, have a beautiful Christmas and uh, take care of yourself and your families and whoever means something to you. And of course, we would like to uh, bring a special attention and thank you to our uh, well, most trusted followers, the CMOs, and of course, the wives backing us up in this endeavor. It's been a good year and we are hoping for a even better one next year. Have a good night. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, guys. Bye.